Hello students, in our last class what we have seen the derivation of the Maxwell's first equation and divergence of the electric flux density. We have derived the mathematical equations for these two topics. So let us continue with the Maxwell's first equation, equation we will have a special case. So Maxwell's first equation is also uh, represented as the Gauss law, uh, Gauss equation for a point charge. Okay. So let me write the mathematical form for that. So we know that divergence of D is equal to rho V. According to the Maxwell's first equation, this equation holds good. This equation, the divergence of D is equal to rho V can also be represented as Gauss equation for point charges. Okay. This can also be written as, let me write the statement. Statement. statement for Gauss law in case of point charge. So what is this? Divergence of electric flux density that is the divergence of electric displacement density in a medium in a medium at a point is equal to is equal to charge per unit volume at that point look at this statement electric displacement density electric displacement density is also called as electric flux density which i have told in the previous class itself long back electric displacement is also called as flux electric displacement density is also called as electric flux density d see the divergence of electric displacement density or electric flux density in a medium at a point is equal to charge per unit volume charge per unit volume is also called as rho v what is this rho v charge density charge density if we represent this statement in mathematical form this is the one which we are going to get see divergence of electric flux density d is equal to rho v charge density volume charge density volume charge density can be defined as charge per unit volume that's it right so this is the statement and mathematical equation for gauss law in terms of point form so let me tell you why a special case of this particular Maxwell's first equations are Gauss law in terms of point, point charge. Okay. So what is that special case? What happens when the divergence of D becomes zero? What is this condition? Divergence of D is equal to zero means what? Diver when divergence of the electric flux density D is zero, then the field is called as solenoid field. When the divergence divergence of electric flux density D is zero, then the electric field is said to be solenoid field solenoidal field what is this solenoidal field means solenoidal field means it doesn't have the source or sink that means neither positive nor negative charges there is no source means no positive charge. There is no 
Sink means no negative charge. So it can be say that neither positive nor negative charges are present and neither source nor sink is present. So under that circumstance the field, electric field is said to be solenoidal field then the divergence of electric flux density becomes zero in that particular case. Got it? What do you mean by solenoid, solenoidal field? So under the solenoidal field the divergence of the electric flux density D becomes zero. It is the case where neither it is a positive or negative charge neither sink nor source will be present so that is the case okay so let us move on to the next topic divergence theorem so what we have seen till now it is a divergence of a electric flux density d now we are defining divergence theorem let me write the statement for that later we will see the explanation of the same divergence theorem Divergence theorem states that the integral of the normal component of the electric flux density in an electric field is equal to equal to volume integral of integral of the divergence divergence of the flux density flux density throughout the space of the enclosed surface Let me read the statement again. The integral of the normal component of the electric flux density in an electric field is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of the flux density throughout the space of the enclosed surface. This is the statement of divergence theorem. Let me write the mathematical equivalent mathematical model for this statement. So, let me read the first statement. Integral of the normal component of the electric flux density. That means we need to take surface integral of normal component of the flux density means d dot ds. d dot ds are the normal component of the flux density over a, over a closed surface. Yes, is equal to is equal to volume integral of is equal to volume integral of divergence of the flux density divergence of the flux density throughout the space of the enclosed surface so this is the statement which can be represented in mathematical form this is called divergence theorem surface integral of d dot ds is equal to volume integral of grade divergence of d into dv this is the statement of divergence theorem we need to prove this how this has come like that okay so let me prove this proof proof of divergence theorem in order to prove this divergence theorem so let us consider a gaussian surface gaussian surface Inside this Gaussian surface, let us consider the elementary volume. Let us consider the elementary volume. The charge 
at this elementary volume is delta Q. The charge density inside this Gaussian surface is rho B because we have considered the volume charge and rho B is the charge density, volume charge density. So what is the volume we have considered here? Delta V is the volume which we have considered. So elementary volume, okay. Delta Q is the charge enclosed within this elementary volume. Delta V is the volume which we have considered inside this Gaussian surface, okay. Now, according to the Maxwell's first equation and Gaussian, uh, Gauss law, we know that rho V is equal to delta Q divided by delta V, okay. If I apply limit, limit for this, limit delta V tends to 0 means delta becomes D, delta Q becomes DQ, delta V becomes DV. So if I apply this, then rho V is equal to limit as delta V tends to 0, delta Q divided by delta V is equal to dQ by dV. Then rho V is equal to dQ by dV. Okay. Rho V is equal to dQ divided by dV. Do the cross multiplication. Then dQ is equal to rho V into dV. What is dQ? The elementary charge on this particular elementary volume. Now, if I want to have the entire charge Q throughout this Gaussian surface, what we need to do? We need to integrate all the dQ components. Therefore, therefore, Q is obtained by integrating all the dQ components. What is Q? Total charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface. What is dQ? Elementary charge within this elementary surface. In order to obtain total charge, we need to integrate all these elementary components. Let me write here. Q is equal to integral of dQ can be replaced by rho V into dV. So let me take it as equation 1. So according to the Maxwell's first equation, according to Maxwell's first equation, what it says, divergence of electric flux density D is equal to rho V. Okay. If I substitute equation 2 in equation 1, I will get Q is equal to integration of del dot D into dv right so since dv is present this becomes volume integral of del dot d is equal to dv we know that we know that from gauss law from gauss law what it says gauss law states that surface integral of d dot ds d dot ds is equal to q. Let me take it as equation 3. Substitute equation 3 in the above equation. What we are going to get? Surface integral of d dot ds is equal to volume integral of grade del dot d into dv. This is what we are trying to this is called divergence theorem. So, which can be stated as surface integral of normal component of the electric flux density over a closed surface in an electric field is equal to volume integral of divergence of D within that same closed surface. That is what we have written in terms of the statement. Got it? This is called divergence theorem which is very very important in the further topics okay okay let us solve few problems on d dielectric 
electric flux density let me read this statement problem statement a dielectric sphere of radius 5 cm contains an electric charge whose density is rho v is equal to 1.2 into 5 minus 2 pi micro coulomb per meter cube evaluate the electric flux density at a point 100 meter away from the center of the sphere so in this particular problem sphere dielectric sphere has been considered volume charge density is given and asking us to calculate electric flux density d okay so in other words we can calculate e also electric field intensity because we know that the relationship between e and d is very very simple d is equal to epsilon naught into e if we if we know e we can easily calculate d okay so evaluate the electric flux density d in other in other words they can ask you to find out e also d also okay at a point 100 meter away from the center of the sphere so let me write the given components solution the given components are sphere we need to consider sphere we need to consider the volume charge density rho v is equal to 1.2 into 5 minus 2 pi micro coulomb per meter cube and radius radius is represented as small r 5 centimeter which can be written as 5 into 10 power minus 2 meter if we convert this into meters this becomes 5 into 10 power minus 2 meter so what about distance we cannot use r symbol again here because there is a symbol r which have been considered for radius of the sphere so let me use distance symbol as d small d small d is 100 meter from the center these are the given quantities what we need to calculate we need to calculate d what is the equation for d d is equal to q divided by 4 pi r square in other words you can ask you to you can be asked to calculate e also 4 pi epsilon naught into r square but here instead of r we need to consider d because r is the symbol for radius of the sphere hence i will replace this r by d in this particular problem only not with respect to the entire derivation in this particular problem since these two symbols are going to get confused so we are using d instead of r so we need to calculate q also without q we cannot able to find out either of either d or e now let me solve for rho v rho v is equal to 1.2 into 5 minus 2 pi if we try to solve this rho v is equal to minus 1.54 into 10 power minus 6 since rho v is constant we don't have any unit for this okay so we know that we know that q is equal to integral of rho v into dv in our previous discussion we have seen this equation q the total charge enclosed within the gaussian surface is the integration of volume integral of these two things rho v into dv see q is equal to integral of rho v into dv what is the value of rho v minus 1.54 into 10 power minus 6 into dv since rho v is constant take it outside q is equal to minus 1.54 into 10 power minus 6 integral of dv what is the integral of dv it is v q is equal to minus 1.54 into 10 power minus 6 into v what is v v is volume of sphere volume of a sphere 
वॉट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ स्पीयर फोर बाई थ्री पाई आर क्यूब वॉल्यूम ऑफ द स्पीयर इज फोर बाई थ्री पाई आर क्यूब देर फोर क्यू इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव फोर इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स इंटू फोर बाई थ्री पाई आर क्यूब ओके इफ यू ट्राई टू सब्सिट्यूट ऑल द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ओनली आर इज अनोन वॉट इज आर टेन पावर माइनस टू फाइव इंटू टेन पावर माइनस टू देर फोर क्यू इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव फोर इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स इंटू फोर बाई थ्री पाई इंटू फाइव इंटू टेन पावर माइनस टू होल क्यूब If we try to solve this equation for q, then q will result in 8 into 10 power minus 10 coulomb. If we solve this, we are going to get 8 into 10 power minus 10 coulomb. Once we obtain q, we can easily calculate e by using e. We can directly go for d. Then e is equal to q divided by 4 pi. epsilon not into d square not r square because distance is given as 100 meter d square e is equal to 8 into 10 power minus 10 divided by 4 pi into 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 into 100 meter 100 square if we try to solve this e is equal to 719 into 10 power minus 6 volt per meter this is the value of e if we want to have d d is equal to epsilon not into e therefore d is equal to 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 into 719 into 10 power minus 6 okay that's it here itself you can directly calculate you you just neglect epsilon not and directly substitute it for d so without writing another statement i have given both d and e in the same problem itself whenever if you are asked with d, d either d or e in the examination you can make use of these two equations okay this is how you need to solve this kind of problems let us solve one more problem okay let me read the statement within a dielectric sphere of radius a the volume charge density rho v is equal to 1 minus r by a whole cube determine the electric field at r is equal to 4a you need to observe this rho v component here in the previous case in the previous problem rho v is was independent of r but here charge density is dependent on r so when charge density depends on the radius a and r we need to go with some dif different approach so okay let me show you how this problem to be solved okay here also they are asking us to calculate the electric field in the previous problem also the same agenda but the rho v component given in the previous problem was constant but now it is a it is dependent on r okay that is the only change in the same fashion so we need to calculate q first in order to first let me write the given given rho v is equal to 1 minus r by a whole cube okay so r is given as 4a okay then radius is a given as a okay now you are asking to calculate e e is question mark what is the equation for e e is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon not into r square so q is the unknown quantity so we need to calculate q because r is known r is equal to 4a at 4a we need to calculate electric field intensity in order to calculate electric field q should be known so agenda the first agenda of this problem is calculation of q 
we know that let me write here we know that q is equal to integral of rho v into dv right integral of rho v into dv what is v v is volume of sphere v is volume of sphere here also dielectric sphere have been given v is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the volume of sphere we know that v is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube we need dv differential of this that means differentiate this equation on both sides this results in dv is equal to 4 by 3 into pi into 3r square into dr this is the differentiation of this 3 and 3 gets cancelled we left with dv is equal to 4 pi r square into dr substitute dv is equal to this quantity into the above equation hence q is equal to integration of limits from 0 to a from origin to the circumference of this sphere 0 to a radius a is the radius of the sphere given what is the rho v component 1 minus r by a whole cube into dv dv value is 4 pi r square into dr okay this is the thing see 4 pi is constant take it outside q is equal to 4 pi integral of 0 to a okay if I take r square inside r square minus r power 5 divided by a cube into dr see this is very simple calculation take 4 pi outside the integral since it is constant r is variable r square should be multiplied with these two components so 1 into r square r square r cube into r square r power 5 if i split this power for new, both numerator and denominator i got this one now integrate this after integrating what we are going to get q is equal to 4 pi into what we are going to get integration of r square r cube by 3 minus 1 by a cube times of r power 6 by 6 right from 0 to a okay after this step substitute the limits 4 pi into a cube by 3 minus a power 6 divided by 6 a cube okay what is the lcm for this q is equal to 4 pi times of lcm is 6 a cube then if i solve this 2 multiplication of this 2 a cube a power 6 minus a power 6 okay this much if i solve this what we are going to get q is equal to 2 by 3 pi a cube if you try to solve this we are going to get q is equal to 2 by 3 pi a cube once we got q what is the next thing we need to calculate e then e is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square e is equal to q divided by what is the value of q 2 by 3 pi a cube into sorry divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square what is the value of r r is equal to 4 a at r is equal to 4 a we need to calculate the electric field intensity then 4 a 
whole square instead of r we need to substitute 4a whole square okay then e is equal to 2 by 3 pi a cube divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into 16a square pi pi gets cancelled okay then we left with e is equal to what we are going to get a square and a cube gets cancelled then so 2a cube divided by 3 4 z 12 into epsilon naught into 16 a square right okay 1 z 2 6 7 okay then a square these two gets cancelled then e is equal to a divided by 16 into 6 96 epsilon naught volt per meter what is d d is just a divided by 96 because d is equal to e into epsilon naught okay we can easily calculate electric flux density out of this equation this is the only change for this problem in comparison with the previous one because you need to remember this one rho v is dependent on the radius of the sphere okay and the distance r from the center thank you